Hello, good evening. Uh, all going well, we are live again. And yeah, exciting. We're nearly, we're nearly at the end of making our spoon. Well, we're certainly towards the end of making our spoon to record uh, the last 12 months. So, as you can see, we've got it in the vise. We've got the spoon in the vise here and we're gonna start working on this bowl. So, for anybody who's learning wood carving, hopefully this demonstration will be quite useful because it demonstrates how we would uh, work, how we would make a heart-shaped bowl. So we've got it roughly marked out here, but what I always suggest doing, uh, I don't think I've got something to actually carve a line, so I'll just mark it out. What we do, we mark out a rough sort of center line, so I just scored that line very quickly, just, just across there. And you work in two directions, and you work towards that center line. So as you can see, we work towards the center line and we just keep working out. We keep working backwards. Um, I can hear some rustling in the background. Everything okay with the live, live stream, Yelly? Yeah. yeah. That's Yelly just in the background there. Um, so yeah, we're working to that center line. Um, oh, we've got a break in it. Yelly, it's coming up error. Can you go and check it for me? Can you keep an eye on the stream for me? So yeah, we are working to that center line and then we're gonna to work to the, the back sort of outside line. So we keep carving back towards the uh, outside line and working towards the center line. And then once we've sort of done all of our carving in the one direction, we will then turn it round and we'll start doing the carving in the opposite direction. So that's what we're that's what we're going to sort of um, work on. Nice piece of wood that we're carving in. You've seen the for anyone who has been watching the live streams, you'd have seen how we how we've progressed on it. So um, just a bit concerned. It keeps on coming up that we got some problems there. Just a comment on it, so we just check to see if we are having problems. Uh, good evening. Hello Mark, hope all's well. Hope you can see the live stream okay as well because uh, it's showing me that we've got a few, uh, few problems. Yeah, all okay here as well. Thanks for asking. Hope all's well with yourself and your family as well. So yeah, all good. So as you can see, we're working in towards that center line, working back towards the outside. We're getting our shape then on that heart bowl. And all of this then, we're very much getting towards now, it's the, the, the finishing off. What I will also do, once I've finished carving the inside of the bowl, we're going to have to shape the outside of the bowl as well. So that's another part of the process that we're going to work on, is shaping the back, the back of the bowl. So what I actually do for that, uh, we'll actually use the, the band saw just to shape around here and then we go on and use the belt sander. So that'll be the two parts of the process. Thomas Woodcarver just here. I don't know if you want to have a word as well. I think there's too many on different devices. If you, the boys and Yali, if, um, so just to make sure that we get a good signal for our live stream. There we are. So we've worked on the one side of our bowl working in towards the center, and now we're working on the other side. The gouge that we're working with is a vintage gouge, an Addis vintage gouge, beautiful steel. Um, if you come across, anyone who's sort of interested in the wood carving, if you ever come across Addis gouges, or Herring Brothers, two really, really good gouge makers, both vintage gouges that they make but really good quality steel. We've got a few videos coming up actually on the tools, uh, and one on a, on a beginner's set. You might just be able to pick up though, this particular one, um, there's a few little lines just appearing. So this one is due for a sharpen. There must be a little feather edge nick. It's not gonna cause us too much problem because afterwards I'm gonna sand it all, all out. But if I was doing some really fine sort of work and trying to get a really nice finish. 
I, I would be wanting to, to get those lines out. But as I'm sanding it afterwards, it's not too bad. I don't know if you can just see it on the camera, but there are a few, just a few little, somewhere on this blade. Here we are, if I just show it, if I just highlight in the, yeah, there's a little nick just in there. So tiny, tiny nick, and that happens. Sometimes in the wood, there may be a little bit of grit. Um, I was carving some teak uh, yesterday, so that might be uh, what was what was causing, you know, you sometimes get that in things like teak. I've got another comment there. Excuse me two seconds, I'm just going to check it. That is Yelly telling me everything's okay. Good, glad everything's fine there. So we carry on building our shape, working towards the middle and working back towards the outside line. And all the time as well, we're giving depth. We're trying to get that depth to our bowl. So it's a nice, nice process doing the bowls. We use a few different methods now because of course, we make so many spoons that to take some of the pushing off, we don't always just carve them out by hand. There's always hand work done on them, but to start them off, we use a router and a template quite often just to get that basic work done. Um, but then afterwards, we still use the hand gouges just to finish them off and then we sand them as well. We have done all sorts of different things though. We've done spoons with uh, the bowl rough and smooth. Um, it's an idea we might do on, on this one actually. I might, might, I might change the plan. Might do a rough bowl. I think it would be, um, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would that be symbolic for this year, for, for 2020? Would it be a little bit symbolic to have a rough finish to our bowl because we've used it in the past for the rough and smooth of married life. So shall we use a rough bowl for recording a bit of a rough year? Here we are, so you can see we're starting, we're starting to get our shape that we want because we want a heart shaped bowl. And we're starting also to get the, the, the sort of depth that we're looking for on the carving as well. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. Um, that would be interesting actually. If anyone um, has got any thoughts on that, let us know in the comments section. Shall I sand this bowl smooth as I would normally do, or should we leave it a little bit rough to, uh, to record this year? So as you can see, we're just building up that sort of depth. I'm pretty happy with the back of it, the amount of depth. And then we're just going to match it then in the middle. So there's a little bit of wood just to come out of here. And that's largely what we want to do in terms of carving out our bowl. Now some of the other things then that I'm hoping to demonstrate, because this isn't going to be one of our longer live streams, but some of the things that I'm hoping to demonstrate here is to just start to put some of the shellac in the carvings that we've done and hopefully then that will really start to bring out the character and colour in the grain itself. Here we are, not far off. Let's do a little bit of work, let's change, I think we'll change our gouge, sometimes as well when you're working on a bowl, sometimes you just need to come across across the grain, just to just where you where you've done those, where basically where you've gone from the one direction and then you've gone from the other direction. It can just match it up in the middle. Oh, we got somebody put a comment there. Let's have a quick check. Uh, I like the idea. Good. I'm glad you like that one, Mark. We'll go with it. There you go. Thanks for the input, we'll go with it. We'll go with um, a rough finish. So, I'll show you how, how I would go about doing that now. We're just going across there just to finish that off. Now if I was gonna do a smooth bowl, I might go a little bit deeper, but other than that, that's pretty much 
that's pretty much how I would do it. And then from here, I would just sand it all. Um, as we've got a little bit of a different plan, let's go for maybe that one there, slightly smaller gout. And then we're gonna sort of take chunks, not chunks, but almost sort of get grooves in it. No, that one's too, that one's giving us too smooth a finish. So let's change it. That one's giving us too smooth a finish. Okay, we're gonna have to go more extreme. Let's go for the smaller gouge like this one here. Yeah, that's really giving us a, that's, that's the ticket. Yeah, so what we're doing, we're putting little lines, little indents in the finish. So that gives us a rough finish to our bowl. And this, yeah, it's, that's the idea with these things. It's symbolic. Represents a little bit of a rough year. And um, okay. we put that on there. Yeah, have you, the boys off the, cause it's, that's what we don't want is that the, reception going on and off we just as we've been talking we've um we've decided to to finish this one with a bit of a rough bowl because right. i know we've also done a rough finish on the spoon yeah if you want to get them to turn them off there we are so all of that now we've got little we've got little grooves gives a little bit of extra character to the carving there we are. I don't know if that's coming out on the camera, but that's what we're doing then, is to give that, that heart-shaped bowl, we're giving that a rough finish. That's what we're doing. Same from the other side then. So we just put little lines. There we are, just in, like so. And that will give us a finish a different finish. We've done this before. Back in 1971, Dad put that on his wedding spoon. We've got a video on that actually, explaining the story of how that came about, why he actually came up with that idea. So anyone interested in that, that's in our the documentary that we filmed about the stories behind all of our love spoons. So you can find that one on our YouTube channel as well. But we're just gonna finish off now just matching up the one side with the other side. Because we've just got a few little lines left in there. There we are. I'm gonna take out a little bit more there just to, because whilst we want a rough finish, we don't want a, a messy finish. There we are. And that we just got to turn around just to finish this side off. So that is the way we're going to do our bowl. Just like so. And from here, we're going to start looking. Um, we've got a little bit of sanding work. Mark, Mark likes that idea. <coughs> there we go. So. I'm happy now. Radio. Yeah, we, we, we've we've um, oh, we've 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 seen that one. We've had a chat on there. Yeah, as always. Thanks, thank you for the support, and uh, we've gone with the idea thanks to your uh, to your input. So there we are. Our our YouTube uh, channel now is having a, an influence on how we uh, how we do things in terms of recording the year. Well, we used to get a lot of people in the workshop, didn't we? And we'd, That's right. we'd get ideas from people from coming people. in the workshop. Yeah. You know, they'd say, oh, what about recording this? Or what about recording that? All sorts of different ideas. Yeah. And we're always open. We're always open to input from others. Because that's the beauty of, you know, working with the Love Spoon, is that you can take ideas um, and, and sort of share them. And it can enhance the, the work that you do. It's always good to be open to ideas and input from, from others. Now then, um, I've been doing, you can see where we've done all of that. What I've been doing, I've been doing a little bit of sanding around the outside with like a finishing sandpaper. It's just been to sort of just smooth off the finish on that twist. 
Um, so we did some work. This one here is a piece of P240. So that's the grade of sandpaper that we're using. And it's just to give it a little bit of a, a smoother finish around the outside. There are other things that we do need to work on as well. We've got this, this piece here, this stem, um, that also needs a little bit of work just to finish it off. We can take that line out. But again, I'm gonna do that when I do that bandsaw work on the back of the bowl. Um, it may not look like it as well, but a point to mention here is that yeah. although you're using sandpaper, I know a lot of people don't, well, some people don't use sandpaper at all, yeah. and they leave it off the chisel. Yes. One of the things you're actually doing with the sandpaper is that you are going in the direction of the grain all That's right. the time. So it doesn't yeah. look like it, I know. So you're not scratching across. That's right, because here, see, I'm looking, and that's what we're doing all the time when you're woodworking, you're constantly trying to read the grain. So as I'm coming down here, the grain is sort of going in this direction here. So that's why you see me sanding in this direction. And again, some would look at this and say, well, why aren't you using a block? Simple reason, I can't shape it if I got a block. I know that the sanding is gonna slightly follow the contours of my thumb, but if you've got a block, it's just gonna sand across the top. It's not gonna get in there and actually sand anything um, significant for you. So just doesn't do the job that we want it to do. Just gonna refocus again, two seconds. There we are, just like so. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of shellac on and this- I, I use the other brush actually. Which one? It was, um, that one's lost its shape. Is it really? Yeah. I've been, I've been using this one. Yeah. I, I prefer this one. We, what it is, we, we bought different brushes. This is another challenge. We should go through that, another video, and talk about some of the simple little difficulties. I'll get the other brush just to show you the shape of it, all right? Well, one of the difficulties we were having, we bought a brush, and this is a common thing, and the bristles, they all come off. And that's a bit of a nightmare then, because you're shellacking it, and then you look at where you've shellacked, and you've got all these bristle marks. So that doesn't look very clever. What I'm struggling with now, it just got a little shave in and it's just got stuck. There we go, that's got it out. It got stuck in the phoenix's tail. So that's what I was trying to get out because that's not gonna be too great for us if that gets stuck in there. Here we go then, let's start to see. We've got that rough finish. Look at that grain coming out. This is one of my favorite parts, is actually seeing the color and the character and you start to see, oh yeah, I'm happy with the, that's coming up nicely. This is a great part of the process. Anybody doing woodworking, when you put that first coat of shellac on, that's fantastic when you see the character and colour of the grain. Yeah, that really is nice. And you also know then that you're getting towards, you know, you're getting towards the end of the project. So whilst we've still got some little jobs to do. I don't know if the camera's picked it up here, but you've got the, the wool there being, you know, the lines on there. Yeah, lovely grain on it. Hopefully that's coming through. Hopefully I've got my settings right on the, when we set up and you will start to see all of that grain coming through. Can you see the difference now between the brush? Yeah, well this has gone a bit, this has gone a bit yeah, fluffy. Yeah, this one, this was the one, and this is interesting because as Dad's saying, that one's held its shape better, so you're happier working with that one, yeah? Well, the thing is, <laughs> I've been using the blue one more than the other one, so obviously that's why the blue one's gone out of shape. Yeah, but because I... A point, though, what I would say is that we, we buy the brush from, um, oh dear, where is it, Dave? Um, B&Q, you bought these yeah, ones Yeah, B&Q, was it? Yeah. And, and I thought I was getting the right size. Well, this one as well, we thought it was gonna be a good brush. Or somebody else put a comment on there if you wanna. Okay, I'll have a look now. Uh, but, this was the one I wasn't happy with because all the bristles kept on coming yeah, off. It was causing but, nightmares. But the next time I buy, you know, the smaller the brush actually is cheaper to buy. Right. And I went for that one, it's slightly more expensive, but next time I'm gonna buy a smaller one. Yeah. Because as it goes out of shape, so the, the bristles spread. Yeah. So, you know, I can trim that one down. And there we are, you've only been, you've only been doing it 50 years. And oh, we're still, always there's always something, and yeah. always something different. And I, I personally, I'm, I know that the bristles have spread on this, but I'm happier myself working with this one. Um, Don Harrison, Borodar. Ah, oh, hiya, Don. It's Nostar, yeah? Yes, yeah, Nostar here, yeah? but Borodar in, uh, where, where you are in the US, it'll be Borodar. Ah, good to have you with us. So you've joined us just as we're, uh, just as we're 
finishing with shellacking. So you can see this is our spoon to record the year. Yeah, hope everything's good with you and your family. And it's, uh, it's always good. It's great to hear from you all because, you know, I, I know you, yourselves, but Mark and Don have supported us in our YouTube channel for, for a long time. So it's great to know, uh, great to know you're here with us. As we, uh, for ourselves, this is quite a big moment, is, is putting that first coat of shellac on. Now I've said, it's famous last words, isn't it? Because I said that the bristles come off the other one too badly, and straight away I've got two bristles that have come off this one here. So, there we are. I think for, for this evening, I think that's pretty much, yeah. I think that's about as much as we can do. What we'll have to do, we'll get it. We'll get this one up on our other social media things because uh, next week we're going to do a different live stream. But I think that is. I think the nice idea is to put a bit in in the bowl of the spoon. Yeah, we'll show that. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, I won't do it down there because we've got to work on there. But hopefully you can see there how that is is actually coming along. Here we are. As Dad said, we'll put a little bit in the bowl of the love spoon as well just to show you all the carving that we did earlier on, showing how that, oh, typical, I haven't taken. Use my brush. I put too much on there. There we are. Yeah, use there we are. That is our rough bowl. And the idea behind that is that 2020 has been a bit of a, bit of a rough year for everyone. So that was the idea was to um, use that as a, a little bit symbolic. We've used the, the rough and the smooth over the years a number of times, but yeah, just recapping. 